welcome to my channel. My name is Jo. I am Belushi Stitches here on FlossTube and also over on Instagram. This is a channel about cross stitch. Um, if you are new here, then thank you very much for stopping by. Uh, please let me know in the comments how you found me or uh, if you were signposted here by somebody. Um, I would really like to know and just to say thank you to them really. Uh, if you're a returning viewer and or a subscriber, then thank you for coming back. Um, I have um, passed 500 subscribers since my last video and I'm really grateful for every single one of you. So thank you so much. I'm really enjoying um, the comments on my videos and I'm really enjoying the, uh, engaging with people here, it, here on Flosstube but also over on Instagram. So um, yeah, the, the link between the two is, 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 is wonderful and I've really enjoyed the last couple of weeks, especially um, getting involved in, in more, more things. Uh, so um, yeah, this is a channel about cross stitch. Today I have some um, whip updates for you. I don't have any finishes or any new starts. No, wait, I have a new start. Um, and I've got some um, sal updates for you and just some general information, general chat, general chit chat. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is floss tube number nine. And since my last video, it's been about four weeks, I think. Um, I have been studying big time uh, for an exam I took last week and I'm sure you'll be pleased to know I passed my exam. Um, you find out the provisional result on the day and then you have to wait two days to find out your exact mark. Um, but you, you know, the provisional one that you get on the day is, is tells you whether you've passed uh, or not. And I, and I have, so um, I'm still really happy about it. <laughs> I'm still celebrating. Um, and yeah, I've got two more coming up in the next couple of months. Um, so yeah, just head in the textbook pretty much as much as possible and trying to just not cross stitch all the time, basically. But I'm nearing the end of my qualification now. This is my last year of the qualification. And so I'm really, um, yeah, really looking forward to that. Sorry I've got a bit of a croaky voice today. I was uh, recording some vocals yesterday. I'm in a band, I think I mentioned ages ago, I'm in a band um, and uh, with my dad and we were recording some vocals so um, I am very croaky today. I wasn't expecting to be this quite this croaky but uh, yeah I think a bit out of practice because of the current situation we're not rehearsing or anything so um, when I do go and sing it's very loudly into a microphone and then I can't talk properly for the next two days which is fabulous. Anyway, so apologies, I'm a bit croaky. So I'm going to start with a new start. So this is a Caterpillar crotch... I'm back at it, crotch stitching. Oh my word. <laughs> cross stitch. This is a cross stitch design. It's called 12 Days of Stitchmas and it's a little tree made up of baubles that are all stitched. See how close I get to you. My camera's not very good at focusing uh, up super close. Oh, see, it's just going to disappear. But it's like, there's the partridge in a pear tree. And five gold rings, which is actually the middle, which is where I've started. So it's called 12 Days of Stitchmas. It's by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. I bought the kit because why not? And this is where I am so far. All 573 stitches. So I started stitching the... Um, I started stitching the dark blue first and then I'm now in the middle of going, uh, filling in the five, the stars, the golden and the hand. Um, it's actually really tricky now to stitch the smaller stitches into the sort of already dark blue section. So on the other ones, the ones that are coming up next, I'll probably stitch all the other bits first and then colour in the rest. And I suppose that also allows you if you have a lighter colour already done, then if you carry a darker thread behind that, it won't show as much because it won't be right up against the fabric. So um, that's definitely my plan going forward and, and for the next couple. Uh, I don't really know why I did it this way. I guess the blue was probably in, right in the middle of the piece and I just wanted to start and I just started. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to do it slightly differently going forward. But um, that one's cool. I don't have a plan for, you know, it'd be nice to get it done by Christmas, but I don't have a plan. Um, had I thought it through, Emma, this could have been a good, you know, a good 12 month for Christmas, but you know, that's my new start. And now it's like whip number 
nine or something, I don't know. So my next two pieces are my current whips and uh, the first one I'm going to talk to you about is Hello Pumpkin. Hello Pumpkin is a Caterpillar cross stitch design. Uh, it was released 2019 I think as a stitch along and I wasn't aware of it at the time. Um, so myself and Emma, Emma X Stitching here on Flosstube and over on Instagram, uh, we both um, thought it would be a really good idea to do this one now. We have started Just Spider Spider. I bet that's the one that crawled across my uh, desk during my exam. Hmm. Hmm. Keep an eye on you, pal. So, um, where was I? Cancel. <laughs> my Amazon Kindle is, um, thinks I'm talking to her. I don't know, I'm not. Uh, so, oh my goodness. Um, Hello Pumpkin. So we decided, we thought, let's do this now. So we started in April and we're going to do this one for five months and we're going to do the parts in the same way that they were officially released by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. We have the uh, original parts uh, with all the rest of it blurred out and we're stitching this one part by part, month by month. So we started this one in April and it's going to continue until August, just five parts, five months. Um, there are people spider watch. So I've done part one. So I haven't actually started this one yet. I'm going to start this one probably tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe even this evening. Uh, so this is where I am so far. And yeah, so part one is the tree trunk, the leaves surrounding it, the grass at the bottom, pumpkins and the mushroom. The pumpkins were by far my favourite part to stitch. They just, I just loved it. And uh, the mushroom was really fun as well. I really liked it. Um, so I'll just bring you in. I don't know how much you'll be able to see because my camera doesn't really focus properly. But, um, yeah. It's really bright. It's really fun. Um, this is 16 Count Ada Antique White. And I bought um, 16 Count Ada for all of the trees. I bought a huge piece from Lakeside Needlecraft here in the UK and I've just chopped it into four and uh, I've got this one. My notes are about to fall off. So yeah, this is really fun. We have a few uh, groups running at the moment over on Instagram, uh, just chat groups in the messaging section of Instagram. If you're interested in joining us, please do. We have a hashtag for this one, so you can search for that under the tag section in Instagram. Uh, Hello Pumpkin, what time do you cal this? And cal for cross stitch along. Uh, it just worked with the joke. So um, this is where I am so far. It's really cool. I really love it. It's really easy to stitch. And it's really fun to stitch. And it's so brilliant to see people's progress in this one in the chats. So if you are interested in joining us, don't worry that you 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 haven't joined us from the beginning. It doesn't matter. There are some people in the group that um, have, have stormed ahead already they, they would already done certain bits before they joined there are some people who are still going to join us now they haven't had their supplies yet um there are people who are just finding out about us uh, and joining in so just message either myself or emma emma x stitching um and we can add you to the groups it, it's really fun and i would yeah come and join us it's it's really cool um i don't know how i'm going to finish this one yet at the end my future self is going to deal with that one so that's Hello Pumpkin. Yeah, I forgot to say as well, this is the official, this is the needle minder that comes from Caterpillar Cross Stitch. And the next part is actually an owl to stitch, so that's going to be fun. Just to say that since my last video, I've stitched on that one for seven days. And um, yeah, I can't wait. Now I've picked it up again. It's one of those things, isn't it? Oh, I picked it up, now I want to start on it. Now so my next whip is Sunflower Cottage. This is a Heaven and Earth design by Donna Gelsinger. And this is being run as a stitch along by Emma from MX Stitching and also Darcy Cameron from Stitchman Darcy on Instagram and on Flosstube. And um, they have this one not as a part sal, so you don't get different parts to, to stitch, it's just all just get the pattern, just stitch it. So I am denied about this one for quite a long time and then I, I did just. Join, I just joined in because it's such a bright and beautiful piece. So And so this is where I am so far. It 
it's really bright it's so lovely just the colors are incredible um this i've stitched on this one for 19 days uh, since my last video i've stitched on it for 15 days i've done about 10,000 stitches and um this is currently at about 30 percent i'm stitching it on 25 count even weave um two over one tent stitch i'll talk to you in a minute about tent stitch my tent stitch saga continues um yeah it oh it's, it is lovely it's absolutely lovely this section up here with the with the post and the um the vine is full of confetti just full of confetti um it took me about a week just to do this whole sort of section over here it's quite bulky now because there is just nowhere to go with the tails and um just in case you guys haven't reached it the most confetti um heavy parts are these light sections on the posts all the way around they are just full of confetti but it they but they that that what that's what's make that's what makes it look so brilliant and i think one of the one of the reasons why i decided to go for it is because of these and because of the posts they just look so realistic um i'm not sure about the umbrella yet in terms of you have to see the whole thing you know to to really to really um understand which bits work and which bits you're not perhaps i think you have to see the whole thing as one piece for context but for me this umbrella is is missing the detail uh that this section has um and this section with the flag um very very detailed all the vines are very detailed but it's not until you see it all together in one go so i'm sure it'll be absolutely fine and, and wonderful uh i am enjoying this one i so 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 tent stitch saga better get comfortable so the last time just looking for the spider uh so the last the last video or the one before i was showing you guys my um alice from gecko rouge piece and that was on 25 count that was tent stitch and when i was tent stitch is just half stitch so it's just the uh, one leg and i was only doing the bottom leg of the cross stitch um and i was approaching so all the stitches go in the same way so they're all bottom left to top right or top right to bottom left so they're all going this way it might be that way to you but I can't remember which way you'll see this, especially when I upload it. I don't know which way it's going to be right around. Anyway, bottom left to top right or top right to bottom left. And when I was doing the Alice piece, I didn't care which side I approached it from. If I just got to it the quickest way and I just stitched it. And then when I finished the piece, I realised it had warped a little bit. So the bottom right corner of the whole finished area was sort of pulled a little bit more and a little bit stretched. So it's not square. So when you try and square it, you know, if you were to put a frame on it, there are bits that are outside um, outside of the area. So it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect, but um, it has moved a little bit. So I thought, okay, let's try and deal with that. So I watched a video on YouTube by Pam's Crafty Corner and it was showing a modified sort of tent stitch. And um, the plan and the way that I've been stitching this is that for all of the odd rows, so Row, I'm using Pattern Keeper, so it's really easy to see. So row one, five, one, three, <laughs> one, three, five, seven, nine. I stitch all of the stitches bottom left to top right, and on all of the even rows, so two, four, six, eight, and ten, I stitch top right to bottom left. And the plan behind that is that the fabric then is still going to get across. It's going to be pulling the fabric sort of up on one row diagonally, and then down diagonally in the opposite direction on the next row down. So there's going to be crosses on the fabric, it's just that they're, they're not as uh, crossed on the same row, if you see what I mean. Does that make sense? I think I hope that makes sense. So I thought, okay, well that might be okay. So I moved my um, hoop, so I'm using a seven inch hoop for this one. I moved my hoop a little bit and I moved it across and I thought, oh, while it's off the hoop, I will just check to see whether it's uh, warped a bit or whether it's still absolutely fine. Okay, so I just have a piece of paper folded up. Um, the only bit of the paper is square at the top, so ignore, 
ignore everything else at the bottom of the piece of the paper. Basically, if I shore up and square up this here in a line, then, and I'm holding that in place, and I move the paper along, then you can see this <laughs> is not square. And if I try and square or straighten up this piece of paper, which is, this corner is square, against the stitching, then you can see that this bit down the side here moves. I hope YouTube doesn't choose that bit as like the thumbnail, because otherwise it's just a picture of me covering up my stitching. Uh, I'm gonna do the other corner just to show you. So if I square this one up against the top, obviously not like that, then this, mm, you get the point. Basically, it's not square. So it's starting to warp a little bit. It's starting to go in the same direction that it went before for Alice. So I blamed a bit of Alice on the fabric I showed you, I think, or I I explained, I think, how the fabric was a little bit, was very wonky to start with, um, but also potentially my stitching. So I was hoping that this um, technique of doing this uh, different way, and it's quite a tricky, so not only are you sort of counting, oh, I'm counting, I don't know, seven across and four up to get to that next stitch, you're actually also then I actually then have to count down or up and go, oh, that's that's five, that's row five, which means the stitch has got to go bottom left, top right. And if I'm doing a loop start, the way that I do it means that I have to start at the top right of that piece, even though I'm gonna be stitching into that piece. It takes a lot more to count, which is why I'm surprised really that I've been working on it so much during this month of April while I've been studying for my exam, because this is actually quite a tricky stitch now. I have to think about it a lot more than just I did with Alice, which was just wherever there was a stitch, I just stitched it. I didn't really care about the approach. The one thing that I thought maybe I'm doing, and again, please can I have your advice? Please let me know. So I'm gonna use this one as an example. I stitch on a seven inch hoop. Um, this doesn't have a huge amount of fabric. So I don't know whether this is a good example or not, but I'm gonna use it because it's the only one at the moment I've got in a hoop. You'll be pleased to know I have actually taken things out of, out of the hoops. So what I tend to do is I will hold the hoop in my left hand and I'll stitch with my right hand, which is my dominant hand, and I will sort of guide um, my stitches with my left hand um, the, on the back there. That's how I'll stitch. And so because I'm holding this in my hand with my thumb across here, I want as little fabric here as possible. So especially when I get to the other side of the piece, I've got more fabric here. So what I do is I fold up this side, which is where I'm gonna be holding it, and then I sort of spin it and twist it round, as you can see here, to get it out of the way. Fold and twist round the fabric, both on the bottom and on the top, to move it out of the way. And then I either pin it, or I use these little thread huggers, spool huggers, just to keep the fabric out of the way. So what I'm wondering, what I'm thinking I might have I might be doing, which I suppose I am doing, but it's only just sort of dawning on me, is that potentially I am pulling the fabric down towards the bottom, down towards the bottom right, which is where the main issue I think is for Alice and where this warping business seems to be going. So I'm wondering, so I'm wondering if I should stop doing that. <laughs> So I've, what I've done is, uh, I've taken it out of the hoop again, but I was stitching on sunflower before I was re recording this. So instead of doing all this business, all I'm doing is folding it in straight here and just sort of letting the fabric dangle down the bottom, letting the fabric free at the top, but I can't stitch with all this fabric around. So I'm just sort of loosely folding it up, but what I'm not doing is like twisting it or pulling it or pinning it against its will, which is I think probably what I'm doing on these maybe. Um, I've never had this issue with anything on 18 count or 16 count or 14 count. I've never had this issue before. Um, I need to take out Robin to have a look because Robin's on 25 count one over one and I need to check whether I'm doing the same thing on that. 
before I go drastically into a new method. Um, so I've ordered a grind guard from Etsy, which I'm wondering if I can loosely keep my fabric, you know, loosely folded or rolled up inside of a grime guard, then there's no need for sort of doing all this pinning business. I don't know. What do you think? I had some wonderful comments and um, about Alice and a lot of people have just said to me, you know, when you wash, when you wash the piece, um, when it's dried, it'll probably sort itself out a little bit more. And also then the framer, the poor framer, but hopefully the framer will be able to help a little bit sort of um, get it right. Because with Alice, you can put, you can make it square by pulling it square. So I'm just wondering if that will work instead. So I've held this up for a really long time now, so I'm going to put it down. But that's what I thought. Maybe I'd try that and see where we go. Don't know. It's a learning experience that I'm enjoying finding and trying different things. Hopefully I'll get to the bottom of it. Next time you see me, I probably will have a new start. I saw this and just immediately went and ordered it. And I've kitted this one up with fabric and floss from Lakeside Needlecraft. I've got some colors in my stash already and the ones I don't have then I've ordered through from Lidl, uh, from Lakeside Needlecraft, um, Lidl. Um, this is uh, Fresh Hell or what fresh hell is this? I frequently have that feeling and this pattern just put it into words and cross stitch for me <laughs> so uh, I ordered this one straight away um, I'm gonna start on it immediately I just can't I just can't even wait it's just perfect for me so this uh, is from Etsy and I bought this one from Steph X stitch everything I mentioned today I'll link below um, but yeah that's gonna be my new start um, most of the stitches, most of the colours, there's a lot of colours in there, but most of the colours have about sort of 200 stitches, so I'm hoping, they're quite blocky as well, so I'm hoping I'll be able to just get to that one, and I've ordered 16 count fabric for that one, I'm really enjoying working on 16 count for um, my Hello Pumpkin, and really enjoying stitching, counting, stitching, counting, I'm really enjoying stitching on 16 count, um, I do railroad my stitches, which is when you, um, have the needle and the floss on top of the fabric and you're about to put the needle back down uh, instead of just putting the needle in I would put the needle through the threads there's lots of tutorials and things on on YouTube uh, that will explain much better than I will uh, but yeah basically you split the thread with your needle before you go through the hole it takes an extra millisecond to do um, the more you do it the quicker you become at it uh, and I do railroad and I also a lot of people just stitch the bottom legs of the crosses normally and then they will railroad the top but because I want as much coverage as possible on 16 count um, I railroad both but it just becomes habit to do it and I'm really happy with the coverage I have on on Hello Pumpkin so I thought I would go with 16 count for Fresh Hell uh, I also like the size of it um, I'm gonna frame that one I think just in a white frame afterwards um, of course I say that, I don't actually frame anything, so I probably won't frame it at all. Um, and moving on, uh, oh, that talking of framing and stuff, um, Caterpillar Cross Stitch released a video recently, two lovely ladies um, from the Steel, Steel City Stitchers uh, showing different two different ways of framing. Um, one was the pinning method where you um, pin the sides of the cross stitch to like a foam board and then you do stuff and then the, the technical version, it's the technical version, and then the other one was uh, lacing, and I think I'm going to try the pin version, the pinning version for framing. I really, really like it, and the more I see people pinning these pieces and then putting them on easels as finishes, the more I like that as well. So I've um, decided for a few pieces where I want them, and I just have to do it. And I realistically, I need, you know, I need to buy all the materials. I need like two days to have a go at it. Yeah, I. I probably won't be able to do it realistically until my next couple of exams are over. I just need to spend the, the time studying. Um, okay, so the next thing to talk to you guys about are plans. And um, yeah, mainly involving Sal's, um, also known as Emma, X-stitching. 
only joking Emma. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk to you about was some plans and some sale plans. Um, Morgan from Honeybee Stitcher over on Instagram, also here on Flosstube, uh, put in her recent video that myself and Emma, Emma X Stitching, are the sale queens, Morgan. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> um, we have got Hello Pumpkin running. We've also got Deck the Halls starting. It's a Caterpillar cross stitch design. Deck the Halls is a Caterpillar cross, crotch stitch. Deck the Halls is a Caterpillar cross stitch design. I nearly said crotch stitch again, oh my word. Um, and this was the Christmas stitch along in 2019. So again, I wasn't involved, Emma wasn't involved. So, so I messaged Emma to say that I was ordering this one or that I'd ordered it. And Emma came back and said, uh, oh, I've got that one in my stash, Sal. <laughs> And I said, go on then. So again, within, you know, three minutes, we had the parts, the plan, the months, the hashtag, you name it, we had it. So um, this one is going to be run. I should probably show you. This is Deck the Halls. Um, sorry for the glare. This is Deck the Halls. Um, so we're going to run this one from June till November. So for six months, we're going to be... Um, stitching this one in parts similar to hello pumpkin in that we already have the design we already know what, what it's going to be um you can buy this still as a kit or just as a pattern and then kit it up yourself um we have found the original photos from the original release and so they're blurred out it's quite fun when they're blurred out i try and, now that i've decided to do this one i'm honestly not looking at it very much because i want the parts to be a surprise even now for hello pumpkin I don't know what's coming and um, I have a terrible memory so I don't remember what is <laughs> what's coming so it's fabulous uh, so with this one I know that you start um, I think it's this section then you work up per month and then you come back to I think here and then you work down so uh, every month we're going to be um, stitching this one so again similar to Hello Pumpkin you have time to start with us on the same day if you're interested if you already have this one um, please come and join us we've got another group on Instagram running for this one uh, a lot of people wanted were, that were in the Hello Pumpkin group set, jumped on this one they're roping in Darcy we've uh, added him to the group and he has no choice now really but to start it with us right and there's actually a video on the Caterpillar Cross Stitch YouTube channel where they show uh, how to finish this one as a wall hanging um, and I think I might do that just to get this sort of um, wooden uh, doweling and I think it's lined at the back um, and how to do it and how to use sort of weighted rope at the bottom to keep it so that it's straight and flat and I, I, th I thought it was great I really enjoyed the video so I think I might finish that one like that um, it seems a bit Christmassy hanging from somewhere so yeah that's the plan so this is deck the halls the hashtag for this one is deck the halls in time for christmas sal uh, please do join us um even if you're not on instagram just join us comment let us know if you are on instagram either message myself or emma we can um, add you into the group uh, again it, the groups are real really fun and um already fun we haven't even started it yet so this one and pumpkin then will be ready Pumpkin will be ready for, for autumn or fall, and then this one will be ready for Christmas. So, uh, yeah, come and join us. This is Deck, Deck the Halls in time for Christmas, Sal. Speaking of Sal's, uh, things have moved on since Emma's video yesterday. We So in Emma's video yesterday, um, you may have already seen, if you haven't seen Emma's channel, please go, please go check it out. Um, she mentioned um, a piece by Owl Forest Embroidery, and this piece is called The Dinosaur Forest. Uh, it is absolutely amazing. Owl Forest Embroidery are a Russian company and they produce kits for this piece in particular. At the moment is out of stock. Um, we're hoping that it'll come back by May. Emma and I are absolutely desperate to get our hands on it and um, not quite start yet, but we have a plan. Uh, we have a plan. Since yesterday, we, we have a new plan. Our Sal Queens have the plan. If you want to see a finished piece of this one, go to Claire's channel, Stitch Lit by Claire. Uh, Claire is um, a floss tuber. Uh, please go and check out her channel. Please go and subscribe to her channel. She does live videos on her channel, and I think she's starting to alternate between the US time, which is where she is, with European time um, for her lives, and then her lives get uploaded to floss tube. Uh, as you know as one solid video and you can see all the chat comments 
during the video. It's, it, it looks really fun. Claire has finished this piece quite recently and in her last video on Floss Tube, she shows the finished piece. It's absolutely beautiful. I love dinosaurs. Anything to do with dinosaurs, I'm right in there. So uh, we are hoping to get this one from our Forest Embroidery, obviously, as soon as it comes back in stock. And we have a bit of a plan for towards the end of the year. So Hello Pumpkin is due to finish in August and Deck the Halls is due to finish in November. And so we can't now have a month without working on a sal between us. I mean, that's just not... That's just not something we can do, we can allow. So we have decided that uh, December should be Dinosaur December. Basically, we haven't thought too much about it. We haven't really worked it out. But I think, like most of us cross-stitchers, you can do what you want anyway. You can do the thing that you want to do with it anyway. So, so if you would like to do Dinosaur Florist from Owl Forest Embroidery, then join us in Dinosaur December. I also have a couple of other pieces. I have a couple of really small ornaments that I bought from Etsy. Um, and I also have a Heaven and Earth massive design. And I don't know whether I'll start that one because that's, that's a bit of an undertaking. But I thought I'm going to stitch Dinosaur in Dinosaur December. And also then these little ornaments in December. Maybe they can go up on the tree um, in time for Christmas. Uh, I think we haven't really worked it out yet, but... Um, maybe Dinosaur December isn't just about Dinosaur Forest, it's about any other dinosaurs. Do you have any other patterns that you really want to start? Do you have any patterns that you've already started, um, but maybe they need to come out of your rotation and, and you want to just stitch on anything dinosaur related in December? Um, I think like most of us cross-stitchers, if you want to do it one way, do it the way you want. So I think Dinosaur December is more likely to be a start along for the Dinosaur Forest. Um, but again, we haven't worked it out too much yet. We're just going to go with it. And we've decided um, dinos that December is the time to start the Dinosaur Forest. Uh, it's more likely to be a start along than a stitch along. So I don't think we'll cut it into parts. Um, again, we haven't really decided yet, uh, but it's definitely going to be a start along. So if you want to join us, um, check out the pattern, check out the kit, uh, check out Claire's video to see the finished piece. Uh, and yeah, come come and join us. We will have a hashtag by the time we next speak, I'm sure. <laughs> um, we only decided this since yesterday. Uh, and yeah, I think it's going to be really fun. So anything dinosaur related, probably uh, get ready for Dinosaur December. Um, I'm also aware of a dinosaur stitch along a Jurassic Park related stitch along on Facebook I don't think the um, individual bits and pieces have been released yet or part of the design um, so if that's in place by then then I'll, I'll mention it in a later video uh, but I am aware I am aware of it over on Facebook um, so yeah dinosaur December um, come and join us. So just a couple of other bits to mention. Um, Owl Forest Embroidery are also releasing um, the parts every two weeks now for a couple of months for the Alice in Wonderland stitch along that they are running. It's a mystery. Uh, they have released blurry pictures of two different colorways. There's a three color um, colorway and then there's the colorful option which I think has got 13 colours. I might be wrong, I might have just made that up. But uh, I went for the colourful version and I've ordered the threads from Owl Forest and they're on their way. While I was there, I also ordered um, the Swan Lake kit. This one just... Swan Lake holds like a really um, personal... It has like a really personal meaning for me uh, for many different reasons and so... Uh, yeah, as soon as I saw this one, I just thought it was absolutely just stunning, just stunning for me. So, um, yeah, again, I don't know when I'm going to start any of these things. I've already explained to you I have exams and work and life. So, <laughs> uh, but I couldn't let that one go, especially after seeing that Owl Forest wasn't in stock. For me, the um, uh, fear of missing out, FOMO, is, is real for me. Um, I've been burned many times where I haven't bought that pattern or bought that kit or whatever and then it's gone out of stock or out of print or um all those horrible things and so yeah if if I absolutely can't stop thinking about it or if I absolutely can't then I I, I will make that decision 
but um, yeah, so Swan Lake is, is coming and I'll probably do an unboxing for that one. Uh, Jaina the Stitchy Reader just did an unboxing for one of their other kits um, and I think uh, I think I'll, I'll probably do the same for Swan Lake, mainly just because I want to see it myself. Um, even though I'm not going to be starting it anytime soon, uh, I don't think. Uh, the other pattern, which is a sal, which I'm not going to be doing just yet, is by the Fat Quarter Shop and it's called Sail Away. I uh, put everything in my basket one evening the la over the last couple of days um, so you can get uh, the pattern uh, there's a project bag needle minders not needle minders yeah there's a needle minder um, bobbins that are printed what else can you get the fabric the floss I think that might be it and I put it all in my basket and then was like just go to bed think about it I got up the next day and thought just buy the pattern <laughs> so I just bought the pattern I just I'm so proud of myself. Um, so I bought the pattern and uh, will be emailed. It's again, it's a mystery. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head how many parts, but um, yeah, it's sort of nautical, light, lighthouse related. And um, I absolutely love lighthouses. For me, dinosaurs, lighthouses, anything to do with space and astronauts, they're my like ultimate things ultimate things don't even get me started on cats but like th those three things are like my favorite sort of themes for things um and speaking of which um space and sewing in one fell swoop uh there is a piece by there is a piece by somebody who i can't remember off the top of my head i can't even fully remember the name of the piece but it's a astronaut girl with these huge eyes stitching a blue marble in front of her eyes and I loved that piece it's from unconventional X stitch which is where I bought my astronaut piece from I haven't stitched for a while but this design is wonderful it's so amazing and I recently have been watching um, witchcraft floss tube channel here and uh absolutely in she, she does some absolutely incredible pieces um uh, a number of new starts it's always a joy to watch uh to watch your videos and they are um really fun really funny you do some wonderful um poems some really funny stories uh it, it's i really love watching your videos um and so witchcraft has just started um just started this piece and somebody I discovered the other day who I don't know how I didn't see them but uh, I'm gonna pop her channel below and on the screen Laura Gurr uh, and um, she has some incredible pieces absolutely massive pieces on I just they're just incredible like I thought some of mine were, were, were huge but they're not in comparison so um, please do check out Laura's um, channel uh i've only watched her first one i'm due to watch her second one this evening and she has stitched a huge amount of this with the blue marble piece um and i think she's done it on 18 count and it is absolutely gigantic but it is absolutely amazing to the point where you know where you're sort of like oh no oh i'm gonna have to do it i'm gonna have to do it not now but i'm gonna have to do it that's just decided now. So um, again, my future self will deal with that one later on. But so also talking of FOMO and some really cool pieces, uh, Georgie from Crafty Road Gamer. Georgie's got a good couple of videos up now uh, and is working on some really cool pieces and I am trying to persuade her uh, gradually. I didn't use my full, my full force of um, persuasion yet, but uh, I'm trying to persuade her to buy the Witcher pattern that I stitched last year sometime um, from uh, Cross Stitch Lair. But I bought it when it was from Cross Stitch Salon and then uh, also Needle Minder, Needle Minder Lair is the Etsy shop where I bought it where I bought it on and I think it's on sale bought it from and it's actually on sale now so um, yeah everyone should stitch that Witcher piece because it's beautiful and so fun to stitch so um, yeah please uh, go check out Georgie's channel. She mentioned a while ago about FOMO and, um, you know, the fear, the fear of missing out on something. And it, it is, it is real. <laughs> it's real in the craft world for me, definitely. 
Um, speaking of cross stitch layer as well, um, Ducky Dame, you commented on my piece uh, on my last video. Um, I got the notification that you'd commented, but unfortunately, I think maybe because you popped the actual website of the cross stitch layer in your comment, YouTube have removed it. It's not in my sort of comment section or held for review or anything section. It's just not there. When I click on it, it just takes me to, to everyone else's comments. So thank you for commenting. I read the first part of your comment um, and I'm gonna try and find you. And yes, uh, Sarah Bauman, who who runs the um, Needleminder Lair and used to run Cross Stitch Salon is now Cross Stitch Lair. So uh, yeah, that last time I looked at um, was under construction and about to open, but I think it might be uh, ready now. But yeah, so check that one out too. And just really quickly, there's a couple of people I wanted to shout out because I've been watching their videos and um, having some really cool chats with them. So uh, the first person is Megan Poco. Um, she is a floss tuber who started recording some videos a couple of years ago and then it hit March and she just stopped filming. Um, and I discovered her when she came back to Floss Tube, and I think I was probably doing a search for Floss Tube number one, and it came up, uh, and Megan's video came up, and uh, since then she's done a couple more. I was pleased, Megan, to see that you did an April one, which I haven't yet watched, but that means you you, you got past the March, so uh, you, did <laughs> you did say you weren't sure if you get past March, but you did, and I'm very, very happy, so I can't wait to watch. So please go and check out Megan's um, channel she's doing um some really lovely pieces she's working on some gecko rouges she's um yeah really funny and just so lovely so yeah please go check her out person is nicole stitches and nicole i saw i think i was searching for dark queen of the sea um sal running by autumn lane stitchery and also the sunflower cottage uh which is being run by emma and darcy uh Nicole is stitching both of them and there's something about Nicole's manner or her voice I don't know what it is but it is so relaxing to watch her videos um, she's so lovely and the pieces that she's working on are absolutely fantastic so uh, yeah definitely go check out Nicole's channel um, and the last person just I wanted to shout out is Varney from uh, Thread the Needle on Floss Tube and My Stitch Diary on Instagram. Um, I've been watching Varney now for a good couple of months. Um, we have a couple of sort of quite funny things uh, in common and she is working on full coverage, full coverage all the way. She uses a Tiny Decisions app. She has a lot of whips uh, on the go that she dips in and out of. Um, she's working on a, on a mystery sal, which is really cool to see, a lot of yellow. Um, and is working on some amazing pieces and uh, she's just so lovely so yes please go and check out Barney's channel also uh, everyone today I'll link down below just really quickly I won't go into the whole TV section that I went into last time but just to say that I have been watching um, uh, the US office um, I'm a huge fan of the UK one and the US office has taken me I don't know a, a month two months to watch I'm I've now finished uh, I thoroughly I thoroughly enjoyed it and some characters who I wasn't sure about became my favorites and um, yeah I, I, some characters who were my absolute absolute favorites at the beginning they sort of changed changed the way that those characters were going so um, I really enjoyed it and uh, yeah I've been watching that one because these but also thank you everyone for your comments about the terror the TV show the terror um, it's still like it's still following me around and I'm so absolutely desperate to finish the book uh, to start the book but I, I I can't I must read a different I must read a textbook instead so that's my tv section really short um we shan't talk about line of duty because the last episode for the series six was on last night here in the UK and it's I don't know when other people will get to watch it, so maybe talk about that next time. The last thing I'm gonna do is just switch the camera view in a minute to show uh, a, a lap stand that I used to use, or I still use, but not but less so now. So it's the LBC or LBC, LBC uh, lap stand. Um, when I was stitching, meeting on the turret stairs, that's quite a big piece with a lot of excess fabric. And I was using this. Um, and I don't know how I would have done it without it. I can't remember stitch. I can't remember which one came first, whether I started stitching or meeting on the turret stairs, and I was looking for something um, to help me with that, or I already. I can't remember the timing of everything, but I couldn't have got through stitching all of that without the, without the stand, the lap stand. 
so I saw Beth Chadwick Stitch with Beth hi Beth um, Beth on one of her previous videos I was going back through all her older videos that she had one and it wasn't quite fitting right with what she was looking for or with the pieces that she was working with so I just commented to say oh, I use mine slightly differently to how most people use it or how the instructions say to use it um, rightly or wrongly I attach the clamp to the fabric not to the actual hoop or the cue snap um, and then I pull the clamp which is on a swivel all the way around so that the fabric is just sort of sitting up quite high and I can stitch two-handed or I can hold it without having to hold all the weight of the excess fabric and just stitch one-handed um, and I wonder if the reason why I don't have this sort of warping issue on my 18 counts is because for most of my other pieces I've used this floor stand lap stand so I don't know but anyway I'm gonna just put a really quick um, video in here just to show how I do it and I'm chosen adrift by Heaven and Earth Designs which is a Selena Fennec design I'm going to show that one because that's my biggest piece that's got the biggest amount of fabric um, so just to show that one as an example so I'm going to record that now and then I'll come back in a bit hi everyone just thought I'd show you really quickly before I show you the uh, lap stand um, the sunflower cottage stuff I know what I'm trying to say. Um, this is the piece of paper I was talking about, and this is square, and it's probably much easier for me to do it here. So this is the fabric, I'll just zoom you in a bit, sort of flattened out, and you can see it looks a little bit strange. Anyway, so if I now square this off against, um, straighten this out against this top line here, you can see then that this is going off to the side. And again, if I do the same here, if I try and make that square against this line, then you can see that this piece of paper is going off. Please ignore this. I'm just purely talking about this and this is definitely square here. So you can see that this is off and the same if I try and um, go against the top line there, then that's starting to go off. That's starting to go off down to here. So we're one line across. And again, if I just try to um, line that up against here, my fabric is, even if I sort of pull that so that this is straight, you can see that's not straight at all. And I can't, <laughs> I can't make it square. I can't make it square. Um, so there's something odd happening here, isn't there? Like, no question about it. And I'm wondering if I'm just pulling, um, like stretching the fabric in the middle. I don't know. It looks absolutely beautiful. The colors are beautiful and this is this is the section I was telling you about. This is very realistic to me. The shading is fantastic. The same with this section. Not sure about the umbrella yet, but again, you need to see it all in the same um in one big piece. So, uh yeah, I just wanted to show you this one quickly. I it was really hard to describe um and hold up that piece of paper in front of the camera a minute ago, so I just thought I'd do it this way instead. Um all right, so Moving on, this is the Elbacy um, lap stand. Oh. This is the Elbacy lap stand, and um, what you use is you put this one under your thigh, or um, mm. I. I don't have an answer for that. Thank you. I'm not sure how I said what I said, but um, Alexa thought that I was talking to her. Cancel. Can't even whisper. Can't even whisper her name. She picks up everything. So uh, this piece either goes under your leg, thigh, or um, I tend to sit with one leg underneath me. So this kind of goes underneath my ankle. This is the top of the clamp, and this is generally put over and used well, wobbly. Used like this. So um, you have a clamp here. You can open and move this one round. You can make this higher or lower, <laughs> depending on what you want to do with this bit. Um, you can swivel it around so that you can use it, um, if I do that one less tight, you can swivel it around so that you could use it that way round, straight in the middle of you, out this way. You can put it on a table um, by putting it in the middle um, and then your piece won't um, you can, you know, put your hoop sort of here, uh, and it it won't fall. It won't fall anywhere because it's you're going to be using it towards you. So this is now this is now holding it flat and 
quite st quite stable. So you could use it like that as well. Um, so what I tend to do, I'll just get my piece. So <laughs> this is this piece is horrendous, which I'll show you now. This is my adrift piece by Heaven and Earth Designs. As you can see, a huge amount of excess fabric. Um, I've stitched quite a bit on it actually, and I can't wait to get back onto it. But at the moment, I just don't have sort of the brain space to deal with big stuff like this. Um, and so I've got a lot of fabric bunched up here. And this is what I was talking about where maybe I'm pulling the fabric on the even weave and it doesn't happen so much on Ada, it just doesn't happen. Whereas on even weave, perhaps it's just a more flexible, um, pliable fabric uh, and that I'm, I'm, I'm doing it by doing this on even weave is a bad idea. So that's one of the questions I'm gonna be asking. Well, I probably already have asked you. So anyway, as you can see, this is all the excess fabric. There's an awful lot, all I've done is um, moved it all around to the side. And again, I've stitched many pieces on Ada using this um, stand and I've never had an issue. So this might be tricky to show, but I'm gonna try my best. So I'm gonna put this down to the lowest amount. So most people, and I think the instructions show, that they will clamp this onto the actual hoop. That doesn't work for me if I have all this excess fabric it's really tricky to get rid of etc etc so what i do rightly or wrongly this is what i've always done is i will undo the wing nut open up the clamp and i put my fabric in this piece in this piece here and this piece as well has got um it's either got two grooves here or on the bring it into camera shot, sorry. It's got two grooves here, or on the other side, it's got like a ridge, it's like a ridged piece here. But I use the one with the two little teeth here, just to, just because that sort of digs in a little bit better. So I just close that down, I push the underside of the clamp through and then just tighten it as you would any normal sort of wing-nutted piece. Um, I tighten this one quite a lot. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, so now, um, that's on there. So the fabric, the hoop is heavy. So it, it's up to you how you want to do this. You can either tuck it in or tuck it, it doesn't really matter. But the hoop is heavy, so the hoop is going to fall down. So that's unhelpful, obviously. And you, but, but help, helpful in another way, because if you just wanted to hold it on your left hand, you could hold it with your left hand and stitch with your right hand or vice versa. Um, but obviously that is no good for two-handed stitching. So what you do, what I would do with this as well, this excess bit here, is just tuck it round, get a, uh, a, a spool hugger, thread hugger, get one of those magnetic cable ties. Um, sometimes I've got an elastic band and I've just st stuck it and stuck the elastic band around the whole thing just to keep it out of the way. But ultimately, what I tend to do now is that the clamp is sort of here, but this clamp does go all the way over. It's got this um, wheel here so it means that this clamp goes right the way over so I literally move this bit sorry terrible terrible filming technique here apologies I literally move this bit up and up and up and over and eventually you get this piece hanging nicely so I'm just going to swing the camera around we put it on my chair I did not have to hand put this down on the chair there you go so um, this now is pretty vertical so this is where it was before that's you're not going to be able to stitch two-handed on there but I literally turn this wheel this clamp all the way around and that means now it's pretty sturdy so it's going to gradually fall, the fabric is gradually going to move, but I'm prodding this and it's staying at almost 90 degrees vertical, horizontal, in fact, goodness. Um, I can now stitch on this two-handed. So I can um, put this paddle section under my ankle or under my leg, whatever, and um, I can stitch this one two-handed and this stays where it is. I think when I stitched all of Meeting Under the Turret Stairs, I wasn't even trying two-handed stitching, just purely one. So I can hold this. Uh, the beauty of this is you can turn it over to, to tuck in your ends and then just pop it straight back. And it's, it's, it's there, it's, it's perfectly sort of um, 
perfectly good to go and for me this works well the fabric will start to sort of unravel a little bit and then you just keep pushing this clamp all the way around if I put it right to the end then it's practically holding it <laughs> the other way um, so you've got a little bit of give you've got a little bit of maneuverability there um, I have no idea if this actually shows you how good this is and what I do with it it probably doesn't but I don't put the clamp on here I put the clamp to the fabric and as you can see that's right at the back right the way around the back um, this is just I don't know it just works really well for me um, it means you can stitch, you can hold it if you have to, you don't have to hold the whole fabric because it is really, really heavy. This just gives you a chance then to um, to be able to stitch that one-handed way or stitch two-handed. Um, I have used, oops, I have used this and stitched two-handed uh, and it, it is okay. I mean, it moves about a bit. It's not a scroll frame on a, on a stand, it's not secure, but it's fine for what I need um, and this has worked just fine for me. So it also means I can get to the close bits, the bits uh, I can bring the piece closer to me, and that's really helpful um, for what I'm looking for. So uh, this is my bit. Now, if this looks rubbish in the video, I either won't put it in, or I'll put it in and tell you that I will record another one. <laughs> but I just had to get this done really quickly because I said I would, and I promised I would, so I thought I'd chuck it in now. Um, but that's everything and uh, if you don't find this helpful, if you think actually we need a different angle, please let me know. I will do it again and I'll, I'll just work out the best way possible. Um, just let me know. All right. Thanks everyone. Okay, so I hope that was helpful for anyone who wanted to see how I've been using it. So that's it from me today. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing if you have already and following me over on Instagram. Uh, if, you have, if you haven't, then please do subscribe and um, follow me over on Instagram. And then I tend to post whips every day, uh, pictures every day of my current whips. Please leave me a comment. That's everything for today. And thank you again for watching. Um, see you at the next one. Take care. Bye.